Hey, everybody. Kyle from Rhino Tech Support. Just got an interesting case kind of came through the forums, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it because it's pretty common for people who are getting started, and it trips up a lot of people, and it's actually kind of easy to fix. A jeweler posted something on the forum, and I'll keep their name out of it for the time being, but the the they were running into naked edges on their part. And essentially what they were doing is they were projecting, if I go to the original part, these kind of tubular structures onto a ring, and I've just kind of very vaguely simulated that. And they had a fairly large diameter, which is self-intersecting. You can see that's going on right here like this. And the secondary problem that they're having is the, the seam of the surface. All surfaces have seams, and that is right here, is flipping back on itself and it's self-intersecting. And when we get to the Boolean and actually remove the shape, you can see the seam actually splits the surface into two pieces. And so there's all sorts of stuff that's going to cause all sorts of trouble around here. We're like, there's no way we could put a fillet on this because this is super messy. And in their case, there was singularity naked edge right here. And this one, it's not. But on theirs, there was. And this would cause problems if you wanted to print. This would cause problems if you were going to to Boolean it or do some fillets or anything like that. So let's talk about how to fix this. And the very first thing that we want to do is actually go back to the beginning and say, can we eliminate this smaller radius in here, which is going to cause the self-intersection in the first place? If we can't, then what we want to do is we want to first manage the seam. And in this case, this is a polysurface. If we look up here, this was a pipe on this curve. My command line is misbehaving. But this is this is a polysurface, right? A closed polysurface up here. Um, so we can't access surf seam because surf seam looks for a single surface. So what we're going to do is explode this, and then we're going to run surf seam. And if you don't know what surf seam does, is it basically allows you to reposition the seam on a surface. And in this case, we want to get it outside of where the Boolean is going to happen. The Boolean is all going to happen down here. The seam is going to be up here. So we're going to run that on all these pieces, and we're just going to use an O snap to line them up. And we're going to move the seam for all of this. Join it back up. And we're going to do our Boolean again. It's going to make the same mess, but it's not going to be quite as bad as it was before. So let's Boolean this from that. We're gonna end up with the same problem that we had before, right? And, I, and it looks like this actually is closed, but this is a mess right here. This, this whole section right here is ugly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just extract that surface and that, and I'm gonna get rid of this because it's trash, it, it's no good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split using an isoprem. And I'm going to toggle in a different direction. And I'm just going to back away from this a little bit to about there. Delete that piece. And I'm going to back away from here. And I'm going to delete that piece. And you can see that we're starting to get a little cleaner version of this. Now, this looks like a little fish. See how it's got this little tail right here? We're going to fix that by going down here way under the edge tools, and we're going to use this split edge tool. And we're going to split the edge right here, and then we're going to use O-snap and split it right there. So now this actually, if we look this, if we turn show edges on, you can see that we've got a little marker at the end of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a blend surf, and I'm going to run that between that surface edge and that surface edge. And I'm going to just kind of do a better version of that corner. Grab this and trim. And I've gotten rid of that little nasty little fishtail there, right? So I can join this back up. And then if I look at this with my show edges again, you can see that I've got a really nicely ordered four-sided surface. I can hide my curves. And then I can simply come in here and do a four-sided two-rail sweep. And you'll see that because all that bow tying and all that nastiness is gone, that this actually completes 
and joins up just fine. Nastiness gone. Seam is managed. If we go to rendered view, you can see that this looks fine. And you can mess with it, you know, if you want to mess with the continuities or anything like that. But in this case, it's, it's you know, it's a tiny little detail on a ring. This is grossly exaggerated as far as size, just because I wanted to show the, emphasize the, the, the size of the fix and how to do all that kind of stuff. But a simple little fix to a very common problem. If you know how to manage the seam and you know how to get rid of the, the parts of the model that are causing the problem, those type of problems will go away. Your models will, will close up nicely. We can even do something simple like throw a fillet on here. <laughs> or not. Let's try that again. Do something smaller. There we go. I was being a little ambitious with the size of my fillet, but I can throw a lot smaller fillet on there. Something like that. I should have previewed it before I ran it. There we go. So that'll fill it up and close up nicely. And that will render just like that. All right. Hope that helps. Kyle Houchins, Technic Trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.